Hello everyone and welcome back to my Ultimate JNSQ series in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. I have unlocked the pod that I wanted to get and that is the Salamander Command Pod and I forgot that it is a 2.5 meter pod. It is also pretty heavy for our current limitations. So the problem is that we don't have 2.5 meter heat shields. Uh, interestingly enough those are under landing so that is here and so we would need another uh, 90 or so science to get that and of course it might be better to have 2.5 meter tanks which would also be under the 90 category under uh, heavy rocketry or something like that so we can't really use the salamander pod for its intended purpose yet because you know the whole point is that it was more protected against heating but it'd be silly to test that without a heat shield so, we are going to try something a little bit different. We are going to try to chop up our mission into three parts. We're going to have one part that is going to send the Kerbal out to Minmus or the Moon. Another part that is going to uh, get the Kerbal back and just actually capture into Kerbin orbit instead of just uh, arrow breaking. So uh, somebody suggested this in the comment, just use propulsive braking. And then another part that is actually going to bring it back, da uh, bring the Kerbal back down. So it's got to be complicated. But uh, in the process, we are going to rescue these two Kerbals. They will be the ones to actually go to the Moon or Minmus. I think we'll go for Minmus first. And yeah, explore Minmus. It has an orbital spacewalk near Minmus and rendezvous two vessels in orbit of Minmus. Well, we are going to do that. We're going to do the rendezvous. So we might as well pick that up. So that'll be our main goal. Uh, well, of course, we want science. So we want to land the Kerbals on the surface to get the science. So the first thing to send will be the lander. Make sure it's in orbit. It will be automated first. And then the Kerbal will get into it and everything like that. I have not done any uh, unlocking of the buildings yet. We're still under 30 parts, 18 tons, and 20 meter height. And so those constraints, well, th those constraints had an effect. So here is our lander. And we have a controller here. Uh, so there's a probe core there. And I've used the Hermes pod because it's by far the lightest. Even taking into consideration the pods that we have here, like the Mark 1 crew cabin, uh, and all this business. Stuff that in stock might be lighter is not lighter than the Hermes pod, really. So, yeah, we do have the Hitchhiker storage container somewhere in here. There it is. But, uh, yeah, that's for and for an eventual space station, maybe. But there are other sta space station parts like this one from Blue Dog. That's a one room space station that has crew capacity of two. That's only 0.66, so we might never get to that. <laughs> I mean, with. Uh, that kind of crew capacity, we might as well use it. So we've got some food, water, and oxygen. I can't tell you how irritating it is that the food and water just isn't by default balanced in here for the purposes of Kerbalism, when as far as I know, this is a Kerbalism part. Why Kerbalism? Why, why, why is the consumption not balanced for you? Why not put more water and less food to begin with so I don't have to undersupply the food to get them somewhat balanced. And same with the oxygen. Uh, we have to only pack half the oxygen. I don't have a tank that's half the size and I don't want to put it asymmetrically. So yeah, that's, that's just as annoying. But anyway, we have that. And I mean, the food, water, and oxygen is balanced inside the pod. That is the correct ratio for two days or so. But these containers, for some reason, they just randomly pick the numbers. I have no idea why. But the lander, could potentially land on the surface of the moon uh, and come back, but it's really tight on that. It can certainly do Minmus though, and it's got plenty of thrust to weight ratio, but I was hoping it could do the moon, but we might have to pick, uh, pack more fuel or get a more efficient engine. The ideal thing is to get a more efficient engine for it. Right now we're using the Seeker engine with high quality so we have more ignitions, and yeah, it's, uh, it's one of those small 4 kilonewton engine type things. Uh, I'm not going to hunt for it right now. But, oh, uh, no, that's an alpha. There's too many parts. Yeah, too many parts. Anyway, uh, down here we have the eyesore cryogenic engine, and that's because this stage is just going to uh, boost us immediately into orbit. And maybe, uh, and supply to transfer, and definitely supply to transfer. 
quality high because otherwise we don't have enough burn time. It's gonna burn for 11 minutes. Let's not talk about that. And uh, and then we're using the Perseus cryogenic engine down here. We'll throttle it down initially while the boosters are going on. And this one is obviously the vacuum one so that we get more efficiency in vacuum. And the thrust weight ratio is 2.26. I have thrust limited the boosters a bit so that it's not too bad, but the more you thrust limit them, the worse the delta V gets because you're carrying the dry mass of the boosters for a longer time. So we don't want to do too much of that. Okay, so this is what we are sending over to Minmus, and we will see how it goes. We've got one precious antenna on here. Not a whole lot of science. I better just remind myself where the antenna is. It's tiny. Um, oh, I forgot to mention, you notice we don't have any solar panels on this, and that's because we're using the RTGs. This is a little bit of a crazy thing. The problem is that the RTGs are cheaper. Uh, they're 500 apiece and give constant power. Uh, whereas if we uh, don't look at the solar battery one, but look at the larger folding solar panels, 1,250 apiece versus 500 apiece. Well, why would I ever use the one that's 500 apiece, right? These only give 0.4 per second, these give 0.2 per second. Now, Kerbalism doesn't seem to read 0.2 per second, it only reads 0.3 per second for two of them. It's only 1.5, so I have no idea how that works, but anyway, it seemed like a better deal. We'll see if that's true or not. Right now I'm puzzled because I don't see the tiny antenna that I was supposed to have here, and because this is derived from another vehicle, maybe I accidentally removed it? I mean, maybe we can put one of the oxygen containers opposite one of these, and they'll be balanced enough. Okay, hopefully that's not too badly balanced. We've got that tiny little antenna there, but that should work out. Let me try and bring it out here. Yeah, 1.5 gigameters. Seems fine. That, and that's mainly because we have to use the remote controller. We're not having a Kerbal inside this time. No Kerbal inside this time. This is not rescuing any Kerbals right now. It's just getting itself positioned. We could, with the extra one part count that we have now, do something, but I think we'll just launch it as is. Okay, here we go. Throttle up. SAS on. And, well, actually throttle much less than that. And launch. Okay, throttle up. And separate. Science-wise, we're not packing too much, we're just relying on the EVA science and the surface sample. If we can get the surface sample, I forget. Mainly just trying to do it, and then we'll worry about whether we're getting enough science later. There's also thinking about this premise for the eventual Duna mission in 34 days. So for the Duna mission, we'll send a separate lander and a separate arrival vehicle kind of thing. We'll definitely have to increase the size of the pad and part count for that. Okay, separation and ignition. And fairing. Oh yeah, this doesn't have a whole lot of thrust. Oh gosh. has a long burn time. Well, we'll see if we survive. <laughs> Good thing there isn't a Kerbal inside. I better go to a 45 degree pitch. This is, this is just like a single engine Centaur right now. I think that's what the eyesore is supposed to be. It's like a Centaur. I mean, it's like an RL-10. Uh, this is not good. Nothing kills me like the low-powered Hydrolox upper stages. Come on, you can do it. No. Use aerodynamics. <laughs> lift. Lift.
Okay, we're going up now. Well, now we do not have enough for a transfer with this stage, but since we're going to Midmus, probably what we have in that stage is enough. For the moon, this would not be good, though. You'll notice we're using one of those upper stage kits because I wanted the extra RCS propellant there. And also, it's easier to get the R uh, RCS ports as part of it rather than add more RCS ports, which are very expensive. 178 ignitions. I put I made it high quality because of the burn time, but it's a lot of ignitions. We gotta slap some radiators on here. Somebody uh, told me that uh, maybe I need a radiator pack from Nertea uh, because the stock radiators won't work, but I, I don't know if... I mean, yeah, because we've got sort of custom boil-off stuff, so... I'll probably need to add those, and then maybe we can control boil off, and then these things will be more useful, the cryogenic engines. I don't know how attuned the uh, BDB parts are to all this business, but I'm assuming they are. Okay. Well, they'll only do half of our burn for Minmus. There's some imbalance because of the of the boil off, which is tremendous. Uh, we, we it says half of the hydrogen would boil off in a day. We'll keep it equatorial because we have to do a rendezvous and everything. So keep it simple. We're planning to do the docking. It says rendezvous between two vessels, but I decided we would try the docking. Okay, go. Okay, and separation ignition. This little seeker engine, 6.7 kilonewtons, not four, as it turns out. 300 specific impulse. So yeah, we could certainly find something that's better than 300. I think even the ant engine does better than 300, so... There are possibilities. And that'll make the landing on the moon a little bit more reliable. We'd have to have more than one ant engine for that, but... Still, it would work out. It's nice how this fits inside the upper stage kit. Okay, we have our approach to Minmus, but the mid-course adjustment is pretty hefty. So that's not great. I think we'll do it with the RCS. I mean, according to this, we have 367 of RCS because that's a mod propellant engine down there. Maybe it's right, maybe it's not, but I think it'd be more efficient to use it. Use it first and then go with the chrysalis engine later. Plenty of thrust. If only I had good form-fitting mop propellant tanks, but not so much. Uh, I, I tried looking for them. I unlocked a few, but they were longish. Couldn't fit. Especially since we have the height limit. Okay, that should be good enough. We'll switch the engines back around again. It's still a little bit tight for a Mimis landing, frankly. We might have to send fuel for this. Our launch was horrible. Oh, we got a magnetometer scan thing transmitted. That has nothing to do with this vehicle, but... The many moons probe is still transmitting down there, and will be right under us when we capture. Okay, capture. Well, I mean, combined it's enough. It's just, uh, it's not nice not having it all in one stage, but I think we're okay for now. Yeah, I mean, orbital speed is as you see it. We'll try and make it efficient. In a pinch, the Kerbal should be able to EVA and get back, but it's not quite rendezvous. I don't know if that'll count as a rendezvous between two vessels. Does a Kerbal in EVA suit count as a vessel? Not sure. Anyway, uh, so let us launch part two, which is the transfer vessel.
Actually, I think I'll reconsider that. I'm gonna go with the Leo 1. Which is our low Earth orbit rescue vessel. We've got a controller, we've also got seating for two because we have two to rescue. And we need one of them in order to go over to Minmus. The other will stay with this vessel. We've got plenty of supplies, they're actually on the trunk here. And you see the same sort of setup with the Chrysalis engine. Same RTGs. Well, no, actually the RTGs are up here because we want to recover them. I'm thinking about the fact that we only have one parachute. That's not great, but we don't have a lot of options right now because of the part count. Anyway, uh, they've got plenty of supplies. The one Kerbal is going to have to hang out in Kerbin orbit and wait for the other one to return, so that's why we have a lot of supplies. Otherwise, our rocket has two of the Perseus engines, sea level ones. We're playing the same trick with the Bossert tanks so that we can attach two down there and I introduced that in the previous video and then we have the Decker engine this time so more power thankfully and uh, less burn time so we're not worried about that too much and we've got the service module to finish orbit as necessary so this is the first time we're using the Leo capsule which is a Gemini capsule and that is because we're carrying two Kerbals duration is good I mean, in this case, this is not leaving low curve in orbit, so it's not gonna need extra antennae, I don't think. Alright, so, yep. I don't know if we needed four RTGs, but probably for the best. Uh, we could probably remove, remove one. We could have three RTGs, and then we can add two extra parachutes. Let's see our, about our parachutes. We'll unlock the real mount parachute. Oh god, they're huge. Maybe the drag, sh the little drug chute will be enough? I don't want to block the hatch or anything. Anyway, we'll, we'll try two drug chutes with it. In a pinch. Cuts down on our Delta V somewhat, but maybe it'll be safer? We'll see. So, our rescue vessel, the Leo-1. And let's go. Now, of course, while we do have a fair amount of fuel in the service module, uh, it is good that both of our target Kerbals, Dudebus and Luemon, Lu Luemony, Luemony uh, are basically in low Kerbin orbit, so it's not a big deal, and equatorial. So yeah, no problems there. Throttle up, NSAS on and launch. Now getting like below them so we can catch up to them is tough because they're in a really low Kerbin orbit. It's a bit wobbly. Okay, separation, separation, and ignition. Decker. Don't know why the Decker is only coming through my right ear right now. Looking at the balance, it's like panned all the way, and I don't know why. Huh, let me go to the map. No, nope. for some reason the audio is panned all the way to the right, and I have no idea why. No, let's not get too low. We've done enough of that today. Well, this is really my day for skimming the atmosphere here. Okay, yeah, uh, 80 kilometer apoapsis, perfect in terms of getting to our target because we want to sneak below it. Alright, separation. And we'll just time warp to apoapsis, really. Oh no, we lost comms! Uh oh, no. I can't lock fuel either. Oh shoot. Yeah, well that's not good. Well, now we're not in a lower orbit <laughs> anymore. No, oh, that's not gonna work out. I thought we had another comm station over here. Remember? 
We did. We, we had another ground station over here somewhere. And now it's taken that away from me. Well, we can do a re-entry test. That's what we'll do. It's probably for the best anyway. I was worried about the heat shield and everything. We will do a re-entry test. We'll be in a high apo somewhat high apoapsis. So it'll be a more rigorous test and everything. See, it's a positive. It'll work. And in fact, uh, we should be over the KSC when we do the re-entry. Or, well, we'll be close enough anyway. Okay, yep. That is what we're going to do. We'll say 27 kilometers, or that's more like 28. Uh, main parachute I'll set to 0.25, and we'll arm it. These guys we'll set to 0.06 and arm them. And let's just max out the full altitude that they deploy at. Okay. We'll get rid of the service module. Well, we don't really need to carry the service module. Uh, the only thing it has is the propellant and the supplies, and we're not using the supplies. So we've got the RTGs up top anyway, so we don't have to worry about power. Let's just get rid of it. Well, it, that doesn't seem good. It seemed to want to explode into things. We don't want that to happen. So we've learned something already from this test. Let's not have that happen. Now it's not go got a way to hold retrograde though in this core. Really need better cores for the re-entry bit. Well, we're past that Darude location and we will be pretty close to the KSC when we splash down. Uh, I can't control it right now because of the communications. Hopefully it will reorient a bit. I should take it off of SAS. But this is still, in theory, perfectly occluded, so... I mean... You know, they used to do lifting body stuff with the Gemini capsules and they would actually tilt like this or even more. So it should be doable, game. <laughs> this is not an unusual posture for a Gemini capsule at all. I think the game conceded that point. If you are required to, okay, we've got the drogue shoots out. If you're required to be perfectly flush to the retrograde marker, that's not actually right. <laughs> that's uh, somebody has configured something wrong. If that's the case, I'm worried about that decoupler though. We should use a different decoupler that won't explode. The blader didn't all bleed off either, so looking good so far. I don't think it'd be great for a return directly from the Moon or Minmus, but we could see what its limits are. Okay, and recover. I mean, it was a BDB decoupler that we used on there. On a BDB heat shield and everything, and there's no other node there. So, I don't know what to do. Maybe there's a special Leo decoupler. Or it's Leo pod. Oh, let's see. CSM. It looks even more flush. I'm even more worried that it's gonna explode. <laughs> I mean, I think it's this tank clipping in kind of thing. Maybe I'll offset it like that, but none of that makes me feel good. I don't want the heat shield to be lost. All right. Well, let's try it again. Okay. Well, I will toss it up steeper this time so we don't even have to use the service module to finish. Throttle up and launch. Uh, 
That's a lot steeper, but maybe we'll just get into the higher orbit. And yeah, the Decker engine seems to be panned all the way to the right these days. At least on this particular rocket. I didn't notice that before. Alright, separation and ignition. Yeah, now we have this site here, darn it. Maybe we were just too low last time. Pick that one up. But there's another one to the south here. Take a look right there. I feel like last time it was cheating us, but... Anyway, we should get to orbit just fine with those sights in view. Okay, we are in orbit, and we'll be in the high orbit this time in order to catch up with our targets. Oh, Luemini's capsule's right there. Shoot. Um, yeah, well, fine. Uh... We are in the high orbit and we'll let Luemini catch up. We have found Luemini Kerman and she's alive. Don't kill her immediately. Um, let's just, uh, okay. See it said no more electric charge but there is electric charge and food and water. No more oxygen. No, look, Luemini has these things. Yeah, now you tell me to relax. I mean, but you've killed Kerbals before. You've killed Kerbals before. And we've lost comms now. Just in the middle of Darude and Kerbal Space Center. I also have to get used to these kinds of time scales when it comes to rendezvous. Rendezvous take a lot longer in realism overhaul so there's a lot more time to adjust things. See how the prograde vector is sort of wandering away? That just never happens in realism overhaul. It doesn't wander that fast. And so we have to use, ironically, that means that we have to use more thrust and more delta V to rendezvous at close quarters here. Because just the curvature of the world is causing the vectors to wander. And so we have to expedite and do it faster. Okay, well we've lost comms again, but that's alright. We'll have Luemini do the rest. If Luemini can see the arriving pod only packs oxygen in here. Uh, this pod sure seems small for two Kerbals, to be frank. I don't know if their heads fit in properly. But whatever. <laughs> I mean, that head is awful big for that hatch, I'm just saying. Okay, well, we have limited control here. But we have to pick up Kerbal number two. I think I'll boost up here and then intercept. Okay, 1.1 kilometers is fine for me. So we'll intercept over there. Hopefully our gamma satellite will still be overhead. Oh no, it's moving on a bit. But anyway, we have a Kerbal inside. Kerbal inside. The best in processing. We have found Dude Miss Kerman. Okay, well, before you kill him, let me just go over and make sure that it's got food, water, oxygen, and electric charge. Okay. Okay, 0.1 kilometers over there. And Dude Miss can probably cover to 5 meters per second. Alright, should be close enough. Okay, there it is. EVA, a farmer? Dudebus is a farmer. Well, that causes all sorts of problems. <laughs> I don't know if I need a farmer. The USI does this. Adds farmers. But as a result, I can't even... Oh, there we go. At least it's not as bad as a tourist who can't even EVA, I think. Okay, grab. Port. 
All right, we've got the two of them. Now we're going to send the vessel that will send, take one over to Minmus. And then we'll have the two rendezvous here. And see how that goes. Now the transfer vehicle was the hardest one to manage and we might not have enough Delta V overall, we'll see. Uh, we have this whole thing and then we are still using the Seeker engine here. And we're using 60 minutes of, 16 minutes of burn time out of 23 maximum. And this is just a very heavy pod. We need enough to go over to Minmus, capture around Minmus, break orbit around from Minmus and come back. But really, our uh, lower stage here doesn't seem to have enough to get us to orbit here, <laughs> maybe? It's tough to say. So, we'll see. But we have to, of course, right now fit within the parameters. You can see we're very close to the max height, very close to the max mass, and max parts. Uh, we have to thrust limit this a little bit because we're getting really high on the thrust weight ratio there. And we're using these tanks, the Prometheus tanks, so that we can attach the boosters on. And it's just simpler that way. And we're using the vacuum engine. So lots of stuff going on here. And of course this has to carry enough food, water, and oxygen for one to get over to Minmus. And we've got a controller because we initially launch it without anybody. Well, we'll see if this can get to orbit. Now that's totally changed our Delta V there. <laughs> so there, there's some uncertainty in this business right now. There's also the upper stage kit Delta V that's complicated. So let's find out. No Kerbals. I mean the Delta V went uh, went up because we removed the Kerbals. So once the Kerbals are in, the Delta V will go down. That's bad. Anyway, let's see what happens. Uh, I'd rather not launch in the dark. Well, there's some sun on the horizon there. And I don't want to deal with boil off. So SAS on, throttle is up, and we are trying to get to. Well, right, that's the capsule. We want to get to the Leo, but it's right overhead. So maybe a good time, maybe a bad time. Let's go. Um, actually, throttle down a bit because we want to save. Anyway, go. <laughs> uh, we just want to gimbal a little bit. We don't want to use a lot of that right now for efficiency's sake. Thrust weight ratio is plenty. Okay. And off the boosters. There's just one big stage. We didn't uh, have room for a separate upper stage. That might have helped, but we couldn't make it tall enough or have enough part count for that. Nor did we have a particularly good cryogenic engine. We have the RL-10 seeming one, the eyesore. But that one doesn't do quite enough. It doesn't have enough thrust because the payload is so heavy. We'd have to have multiple of them. I think we're gonna have to send a separate fuel tank over to Minmus to supply both our... Well, the lander, yeah, we'll have to have two docking ports on it. One <laughs> one for this, which is a... Dr uh, it will need a drogue and a probe docking port so we can refuel this and the lander. Okay, um, let's get that stuff there, and well we don't have to ignite yet, probably going too far. I don't want to rendezvous with Luemini's capsule, I want the Leo. Is there a way to distinguish between the two? Oh, Dudebus's shipwreck is also in the same orbit. Oh, there we go, set us target. This is a very low thrust stage and it's going to take a while. I mean, obviously right now I'm forcing it. We could unlock the BAD or the VAB and make this a lot easier. I'm just not, because I want to see how far I can get with the 18 tons, 30 parts, and, uh, and the height limit. The height limit is surprisingly restrictive in this case. So yeah, I mean, I could make it easier on myself, but I'm deliberately not making it easier on myself. Okay, hold on there. I wanted to get rid of the nose cap. Okay. Okay, we are in orbit. Oh, Leo's over there, though. I keep looking at the 
Luemini's pod. Shoot. Okay, I think we've got a good enough encounter there, and we might do the rendezvous with the mob propellant. Well, we could practice docking, but we could just EVA the Kerbals across, and I think that's what we're going to do. Or just the one Kerbal. Okay, who should we send? Well, not the... F They're both farmers! They're both farmers! Good thing we've got controllers on both things. Why? How? Why? <laughs> I need to, like, delete whatever aspect of USI gives us farmers. <laughs> I don't want two farmers. Alright, we're gonna send... We're gonna send Luemini over to Minmus. In honor of the purple hair. No, I should have targeted the vessel first. I don't even... Oh, there it is. Come on, board, board. All right. All right, Lemony's on board. And I think I'll wrap it up here. This has been sufficiently adventurous. We're going to find out next time about the transfer. We'll probably have to send an extra fuel tank and hope that Lemony's pod can dock with it. And this is all going to be very complicated. So anyway, with our Minmus mission somewhat underway i'll say thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and i'll see you next time